Now we come to basic properties of electrical charges. Electrical charges are additive in nature. Okay. Number one, additivity of charges. Additivity of charges. What does it mean? That if there are multiple charges at a point, they act as if the total charge is the algebraic sum of all the charges. Okay. If there are multiple charges, multiple charges, then the total charge is equal to the algebraic sum algebraic sum of all the charges that means if there is a positive and a negative you have to keep that into account and sum them okay so so basically we'll be using this we'll be using this for for large distances so from a large distance it will seem as if is it as if the, the charges are a sum of all the charges okay fine the second is is the is the law of conservation of charges conservation of charges okay law of conservation of charges fine what does it mean that the charges cannot be destroyed or created they can only be transferred from one place to another okay charges can't be created or destroyed they can only be transferred from one place to another so it was no wonder that the silk cloth and the glass rod were getting oppositely charged to an equal magnitude right hmm? no you 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 cannot create charges right because uh, the more we have uh, come to understand the atoms and the structure of atom we have seen you you take an electron and you say say from a, from a sodium and transfer it to chlorine okay so a, one becomes na plus another becomes cl minus had it not been possible it could have been that suddenly cl minus becomes cl becomes cl minus without na becoming na plus See, because because if charge is getting created it it also has mass okay now it is mass that you cannot create or destroy where mass gets destroyed mass gets destroyed yes the masses get destroyed no, because whatever we have observed, no, because see, if charge was being created, let us say, and I rub a glass rod with silk cloth, say 200 times, and I touch them, and I remove them, then suddenly, if there was, if there was some charge that was being generated, then one of it, or, or, or it got lost, then one of it will still remain charged, rather both of them will remain charged, but that never happens, they, they always tend to become neutral. Okay. In nuclear reaction, you say the mass gets destroyed. Mass gets destroyed. So what? What is that mass then? 
that mass is actually see what happens what happens when you bring in the uh, you bring in the um, protons and neutrons to form an atom then you would expect that say say sodium atom it has got 11 protons and 12 neutrons and and 11 electrons right so and, and we precisely know the uh, masses right we know all those masses now what happens when we when we weigh an atom of say sodium it weighs slightly less than the sum of the components okay so what must have happened so so classically you think like that when they came together some mass got destroyed and it got converted into energy and it escaped okay now what happens if you are able to supply that much amount of energy it will so happen that they will gain that much amount of mass and they will become separate again when they come together they lose certain amount of mass which which got uh, radiated as as nuclear energy now this requires a rearrangement okay what happens you you actually rearrange the protons and neutrons in a nuclear reaction okay in a in a chemical reaction in a normal chemical reaction you do not do that yeah in a normal chemical reaction you do not do that but in a nuclear reaction you do that so while getting rearranged the loss that is gone the the mass that is lost okay that is what is producing that energy the nuclear energy that mass defect is is what is getting radiated as energy okay. this is like the energy that we are converting to electricity hmm that that that's heat actually so yeah that energy you are converting into whatever so that's why it is only 1 or 2% that whole cycle scheme cycle has got an efficiency not more than 40 percent 30 percent 35 percent okay that is conservation of charge and the third thing that we see is the quantization of charges quantization of charges what is a quanta quanta is a packet Quanta is a packet. Okay, just think like this: you go to a general store, you you ask for sugar, and they say you, you they have got sugar in five hundred gram packs. So you will be able to buy sugar only in multiple of 0.5 kg. Is it not? That is quantization. So what is quantization here? The charges also come in a minimum packet and that is equal to, to, to any charge that you see is n times e. Where e is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Any charge that you get is will come in a multiple of the basic charge. n being an integer e see normally what happens uh, there is a confusion i'd like that to get cleared if you write like this it means electrons this is e the basic charge that is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 plus okay so to get a negative charge you you put an integer there if you have minus 3, then it is not E which is minus, it is N which is minus. Minus 3. Understand? N belongs to an integer. So what is I? N is an integer? N is an integer. What, what is N defined as? Like what, what is the number? No, any charge that you get will be a multiple of the will be an integral multiple of the basic charge 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 that is never so happen that you, you get 2.5 e 
If you're getting that, there is something wrong about it. Though there are quarks which are which have one by three and two by three up and down quarks, but but you forget it for a, for for the moment, right? So so any charge that you'll generally come across will have will have Q as equal to n e, and if you're get, getting something something uh, different, then then maybe you're wrong. Okay, it was it was Maxwell's uh, sorry Millikan's oil drop experiment which established this okay that's a classic experiment and for that he got the nobel prize okay so we have one so, coulomb that is also a it was established by hmm it's right that is a quark which exists for a very very small time see there must be i'm telling you the the future has got a lot of surprises for us i'm not saying that is the end of the world but till now whatever we know it is any there are up and down quarks obviously which have uh, one upon three and two by three uh, so 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 millikan's oil drop experiment okay he he got a nobel for this it was really a remarkable, remarkable you know, discovery. Now, one coulomb, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb is equal to one charge. Okay. So, one coulomb is equal to 1 upon 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. So, that is actually into 10 to the power 18 electrons or protons okay now what happens so it is something like this it is like a step a step is a quanta okay it is a quanta huh? and a slope and a slope is a is a continuous function Understand that? That is the difference. This is quantization, this is not. Why? Because you can afford to be anywhere. No? You can take any height from the ground. Say this height is possible. Here, here the heights that are possible are in steps. This, 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 and this. You see? You cannot be anywhere in between. That's what quanta is. Now try to understand another thing. When we are dealing with a large amount of charge and the changes are very, very small, okay, the, the, the small, the, the, the magnitude of the charge is 1.6 into 10 to the minus 19 coulomb. And say you are dealing with, say, even 1 micro coulomb, then too there are 6.2 into 10 to the power 12 electrons in a micro coulomb. A nano coulomb, still there are 6.2 into 10 to the power 9. Okay, a femto coulomb, still there are 6.2 into 10 to the power 6, 6.2 million electrons for a femto coulomb. That is 10 to the power minus 15 coulomb. What if we go to 10, 10 to the power? No, uh, 6.2 into 10 to the power 3, so that is 6200 electrons for for 10 to the power minus 15 coulomb. Understand? 10 to the power minus 18 coulomb will have 6.2. So you understand even a small amount of charge. So so what happens? Say say this is the quantity, and one electron changes. So so one dot and a dot and a dot and a dot. So those changes become kind of continuous, though they are discrete. This is what is called discrete. Discrete is is a definite change. But you see, if I add one electron to a micro coulomb it goes up by how much only 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 so 1 micro coulomb that is 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb increases by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb if I put one electron so you understand how small this is this will put a, 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 a digit at the 19th place of decimal uh, the, the, hmm? or 18 Yes, so it can be ignored. So the moment you come to some macro kind of charges, 
even nano coulomb okay even a nano coulomb even a femto coulomb see if a, if it's a femto coulomb and i increase it by one electron it it'll take me how many, how how many 6200 electrons to to make one femto you understand that so those changes are so small even for smallest of the charges that normally we consider the change to be a continuous change understand that okay but this quanta thing has to be understood it is it is much used in physics and much misunderstood because quanta is something that is kind of puts you off at least it used to put me off okay i didn't get a hang of what it was what a quanta was quanta but it's packet okay it is a packet because this will come in a big way when we are doing the do, doing the dual nature of light where we'll be discussing the the photons which are which are a quanta of light right so so photons are a quanta that is the basic basic ingredient of light carrying an energy of h nu one one photon carries an energy of h nu and that is what the whole of light is made up of okay so whenever you come across quantization it means there is packetization okay things come in a lump okay so you must have seen the third uh, bohr's bohr's third postulate it says that the angular momentum is quantized so l is equal to n h upon 2 pi so what happens it comes in a packet of h upon 2 pi so whenever it changes it changes by h upon 2 pi not less than that the angular momentum and that decides where our electrons will be and with what velocity they will be moving understand so quanta is that whenever someone says this thing is quantized it means there is a fixed amount by which it is supposed to change and not continuously okay